book of Psalms in the Bible is a collection of 150 prayers, songs, hymns that express all the different emotions, feelings, uh, anxieties, joys, anger that kind of we can have, and they're all summed up in this book of Psalms. There are 150 Psalms that they go through. And the early Jews would use these in the temple worship and would use them in the synagogue worship. Because Christians originally were Jews, the early Christians used this book of Psalms and would use it in their own church services with these different prayers. The earliest monks who went out to the desert to pray and all the different forms of monks who went through um, used this book of Psalms and would either pray all 150 in a day uh, or kind of split it up. St. Benedict, who founded the Western Empire form of monasticism, took the 150 psalms and spread them out over a week or two that you could go through it. Today, all priests and nuns still vow to pray uh, this same way of prayer, and so we pray seven times a day, and we go through uh, mainly the book of Psalms with Psalms with other readings, and it takes four weeks to go through it uh, that, that we get through. Early church as well, once you get past the fall of Rome and that kind of stuff, you get the six, seven, and eight hundreds, the dark ages in Europe, people no longer know how to read. A lot of people, now clergy did, but some other people didn't know how to read. But they still wanted to pray, and they still kept up the devotion of prayer. And because there were 150 psalms, that number 150 still stayed together. The use of prayer beads comes in, and there's uh, the Buddhists have prayer beads, Greek Orthodox always have prayer beads, and these come together to play, that they would use these. It's a way of counting how many prayers you're on without like stopping or holding up your fingers, but you can just meditate, and there's a physical reminder in your hand of where you're at. So the rosary comes into play from that, comes into play from wanting to pray, but not being able to read. So people can learn the Our Father and the Hail Mary, and early on, if they couldn't read anymore, they would have beads so that they could go through 150 Our Fathers. And that was kind of this similar devotion and intention to praying all of the Psalms. You have uh, St. Dominic and the early Dominicans uh, with the devotion to the Rosary as it develops. You also, at the same time, about the 1210s, 1220s, you have St. Francis of Assisi, and his friars, some of them couldn't read. So at the prayer times when the priests and those that can read are praying the psalms, uh, the lay brothers that could not would be able to pray a certain number of our fathers. Around the same time, we see a greater devotion to our Blessed Mother, and so the Hail Mary becomes popular as well. So we see the Hail Mary coming in, we see our Father coming in, we see people not being able to read, and we see history of prayer beads. And this all comes together into one, into the rosary. So the form of the rosary that we have today, um, all of you should have gotten in your family packets about six weeks ago, uh, a rosary that you have it. Um, and where this comes from is, when you go around, there's kind of five groups of ten beads um, that go around. You see that they're separated. There's five groups of ten with the bead between. If you go around once, 5 times 10 is 50, 3 of those is 150. So that's kind of where the history comes from, that it's the 150 for people that couldn't read. But also this is, it, it develops into a parallel devotion that we can pray the rosary, um, as well as kind of either having our eyes closed or going throughout our day and still having the rosary together. Why we have uh, this number comes from that same place. Um, Kind of where the mysteries come in is, as we're praying these prayers, we still want to be praying them. And as we said, the, the uh, Psalms have a way of going for emotion and feeling and anxiety, anger, happiness. And we still want to do that. So they started, while they were praying a certain number of prayers, they'd start to ponder and pray at the same time the different scenes in the life of Jesus or in the life of Mary. And so you'd have these ten beads, these ten prayers, 
to kind of focus in on one scene from the life of Jesus. Long times go by, hundreds of years, and they kind of start to become normal of which ones we pray and which ones we don't. And that's there are three sets of five mysteries originally uh, with ten in each, and if you do all that math, that's 150. Now there's some between, some extra prayers between, um, but that's how we do it. But it all starts with a series of ten beads. And this is just this little portion of time to kind of meditate on the life of Jesus, the life of the Blessed Mother. Now exactly how to pray and what that looked like, it's all in your books. Uh, if you are grades three to six, you get the, the Venger weekly handout, and it's on page seven, it's got a thing. In the handbook, it's on page 54, it teaches you how to pray the rosary and what the mysteries are. Uh, and if you are in um, the younger grades, kindergarten, first or second, it's in your book, it's on page 48 and 49. But 48's got a nice diagram of the rosary and explains it. So how it starts is, at the end, there's a crucifix. And we start with it. It's a cross, so we make the sign of the cross with it. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And then we pray the Apostles' Creed. Now, that's a big, long prayer. And if you don't know it yet, that's okay. Um, that we pray in Apostles' Creed. Then there's one bead by itself. When you make these, you got to get the spacing right. There's one bead by itself. And that's when you pray a, a, an Our Father. And while you're praying that, it's kind of the intention that you have for the whole rosary. If this is, uh, if I'm praying for someone in the parish that's sick or having problems, I'll kind of bring them to mind and then pray the Our Father. If it's for everyone in the parish or if it's someone in your family that's sick, uh, or that you're really happy about in thanksgiving for something in your life, then you can pray the Our Father. Then, clumped together, there are three beads, and you pray three Hail Marys. And normally we offer them up for faith, hope, and charity. Three beads to get those virtues. Then a glory bead. Then we start, there's one bead by itself. And that's the first to start a decade. A decade means ten. So the first decade, and this is where the mysteries come in. We can see that there are there used to be three sets of mysteries, which we've got 150. But St. Pope John Paul II added a fourth set. So we have the joyful mysteries. There are five in there. You can go around. Joyful mysteries are the mysteries that you ponder uh, Jesus as a baby, as a little boy. The luminous mysteries are kind of Jesus' public life. The sorrowful mysteries are Jesus' suffering, passion, and death. And the glorious mysteries we get to look at his resurrection and our life in heaven. So you start kind of announcing the first uh, joyful mystery, the Annunciation. Uh, then you've got ten Hail Marys. You do Hail Mary on each beat. And on each of these, while you're praying it, you know the Hail Mary so well. So your mind is just traveling uh, while you pray this, and you can focus in on what does it mean that an angel visited Mary? What does it mean to accept that you will bring to birth the Savior of the world. What, what, what would must that have felt like for her? And there's all different ways to meditate upon it. And then when you come to the tenth, and you're done, you pray a glory be. And then you'll see on the rosary, you come to a next set. There's a new Our Father be. And you do the second mystery. And you go all the way around. Now the books don't show up, but when you get all the way back to the beginning and the middle, um, you can pray a prayer called the Salve Regina, Hail Holy Queen, and you can pray that prayer, any prayer you want to kind of finish out the rosary. Now some people when they're praying by themselves might go another one around for an intention, or they might have other prayers that they prolong it with, but it's all about your private devotion. But the whole thing is, it, it, it's a way, while we're praying something, we can kind of be doing other things, we can be going for a walk, um, it's just in our hand, we're just relaxing. Or we can really close our eyes and focus on it. And it's a great way to meditate and think about the life of Jesus, the life of Mary, what that means for our own life, but also saying prayers for other people that are in need. And it all just starts with ten little beads that my great uncle Adelmo taught me about 25, 30 years ago to make. And just simple, cheap tools, but it comes into something that can help us pray, help our minds expand. 
And so have a good week. Uh, pray the rosary. There are families that pray one every night before they go to bed as a group. Um, have that practice. At least say a Hail Mary and Our Father, glory be together as a family. Um, and just start the practice. Every night, these are the prayers we say. Every Sunday, this is the Mass we go to. And every this time of the week, if it's not Wednesday, this is when we take a little time, open up our books, watch a video, and a little bit learn a little bit more about our faith.